Hello guys, today we're going to review one of the most legendary books out there uh, and this is uh, none other than uh, Drawing, Room, Drawing Room Deceptions by Kai Hollingworth. The author of this book is actually a lawyer and he is a part-time professional. However, he has given to the magic community one of the best card magic books out there. It really worths every penny. And we're gonna go over it together. Just so you know, uh, all the illustrations and the tricks are made by him, okay, which is something very rare. And he has given great attention to detail, this is how the book looks. 311 pages long, hardcover, very thoughtfully designed. This is one of the books that you can judge by its cover, <laughs> guaranteed. Let's move on to the first chapter, let's dive into it, okay, shall we? Let's go. Chapter 1. Chapter 1 starts with waving the aces. Waving the aces is a very famous effect inspired by twisting the aces from Di Vernon and uh, you will be able to by watching the video understand the, the, the style of this effect. It's uh, for wide audience. The cards were, are held you know at chest level which is something that happens really often in this book and it's gonna be mentioned again and again it's something nice because it will get you out of your comfort zone and this is why I chose this book because I learned that this book has stuff that are not always you know down here or down here on the pad they, they, they are on, in the hands and you play like that the webbing the aces trick has a, a move called optical alignment which is used by in every effect of chapter one Chapter 1 also has an oil and water with the same technique as you can see right here I'm holding the three blacks and the three reds I'm gonna alternate them one by one and you'll see what happens in the end and it also gives you ideas how to do the technique how to use the technique in multiple different ways usually you get different techniques for the same effect but uh, rarely you get different effects with the same technique which is something I like here in this book. So you can actually customize uh, your uh, repertoire by reading this book. One more plus there. Chapter 2 has an effect called uh, penetration of four cards through uh, the jacket, which is again, as I mentioned previously, an effect uh, that uses this uh, parlor, parlor style uh, presentation up here. To make aces vanish and appear in the code, etc. Uh, there is also an ace assembly with the same kind of technique, um, and also with one card and one card effect with the same technique in this in this chapter. So this chapter mo mostly focuses on that using using these techniques alongside the code. One fun fun fact about it is that the code actually is part of the method. It helps you achieve some things. Slight of code. Let's put it this way, alongside sleight of hand, which is very interesting. Again, one more thing that will get you out of your comfort zone. If you have used to always being playing with a card on the table or just here, that's another thing that will get you out. And that's one of the reasons I also bought the book. So this one, along with waving the aces that I mentioned earlier, are the two most famous tricks in the book and also one that we're going to see a bit later. But every trick in this book is uh, gold, original, which is rare. Okay, I highly recommend it. Now, chapter three. Chapter three is chapter three is one uh, weird one, something that I've never seen before. Only when I first acquired the book four years ago, this chapter in it involves a paper clip. Okay, using a paper clip to hold uh, out the cards that you want, or a double, or whatever that may be. Very smart, smartly routined to let spectators shuffle and then retain the top, the the aces. Or for example, uh, if you have a trick like a homing card, then you will be able to um, use a double card without any suspicion of it being a double card. Of course you can do that with rough and smooth, but um, a paper clip makes it a bit more uh, examinable. Because you, you, you know, you're left with the cards at the, end, at the end, at any point. So 
Yeah, I think it's a very fine idea and it has a lot of stuff that you can do with that paper, with a paper clip, combining it with cards without the audience knowing that you're actually having a paper clip on you. Yeah, and it has an ace assembly regarding uh, with, with, the, with the help of the paper clip. Crazy, crazy stuff. Now we don't have a chapter four. We continue with a chapter that is called the interval. Basically, what this chapter is, is uh, a collection of moves that he just didn't know what to do with them. They were cool and decided to add them in, uh, in a chapter. Uh, so, uh, I will just brief you in with the moves, what you'd expect to find in there. For example, we have a very beautiful shift or a pass, however you prefer to call it. And it has uh, amazingly good angles. What you pretend to be doing is uh, squaring the deck. That's it. Uh, however, I don't see replacing the classic pass. I mean, the classic pass is the classic pass is way too good. We are, we have also uh, bottom deal, center deals, uh, and uh, second deals uh, section. He describes them in a way that he has figured out to do them deceptively. And I have noticed that Guy Hollywood really tries to fool magicians uh, while making these techniques, this type of sleight of hand. He doesn't want to, to take the classic route. However, he, the effects are classic effects which he has taken and brought them to the next level. Here in, uh, you also have a picture with a slide about to happen. I think you know what is about to happen just by looking at it. Paul's overhand shuffle, which is going to be used uh, later on in one of the tricks that he will describe in, I think in chapter 6, if I'm not mistaken. And then we go to chapter 4. Chapter 4, uh, finally we leave all those behind and we go to uh, something more comfortable, working on the table. Um, for those who work on the table, uh, we have a gambling routine, okay? We also have a gambling demonstration of a color separation, which is, I think, my, fav my, my favorite trick here in this book. It will be over here if you want to see uh, the routine. You're gonna deal reds and blacks reds and blacks from a shuffle deck on the reds on one pile blacks on the other pile but the spectator chooses the way you're gonna do it singles doubles triples then you separate uh, diamonds from hearts in the same fashion clubs from spades in the same fashion and at the end it is a new deck order and I think this is very nice because the way it, it should be presented is like a, a an exercise cheaters do. Okay, chapter 5 is about destroying cards and reproducing cards. Okay, signed ones. There are two more tricks, very famous tricks in the book, in this book. One is found in the introduction, it's not in the ch any of the chapters. And uh, the other one is found in the uh, epilogue, which is the most famous trick from this book. It's called Reinformation and is a torn and, and restored card effect in which you have a card uh, I will let it play as long as I talk so you can see how it looks like um, basically this trick, the correct way to do it is with a signed card as you can see it's rip, the card is ripped face up and imagine being signed so the spectator and the magician even knows that this is the, the same card there is no switch happening which is uh, very fooling and there's no gimmick. It's a, it is examinable. Literally, this trick ticks all the boxes. Examinable, impromptu, signed card, uh, rip, face out, everything. It's not the most visual torn and, and restored trick that I have ever seen, but okay. You, can, you cannot have everything. That means it's not for video, but it's an amazing trick for real life. People want to touch this card because people believe it's glued or something and it's funny when you just give it away and they see they can just pull it and it's really fixed uh, an amazing trick really just something to remember while reading books is to read the introductions read the epilogues uh, read a bit of everything uh, for example my favorite trick of this book I, I learned it two months ago and I have the book for 40 years this is an amazing trick. Just click on the link I left earlier on the top. Uh, is, it is in my performance section. Really worth it. Now, final thoughts of this book. Uh, who, the, this book is for the 
advanced sleight of hand magician. Um, if from one to ten, it's eight. Maybe you, you can argue that it's a ten, just because it takes you from uh, the most, you know, convenient, uh, like being in on the table or having the deck in your hands. It takes you to perform in this fashion, which is. Um, something that not most people used to so you can add two more points and make it a 10 out of 10 difficulty if you want if you see it this way i won't recommend this for beginners i won't recommend this book for uh, intermediate for me an intermediate intermediate would be someone who does magic for five five years or so so i hope you enjoyed this review and thank you for staying till the end i appreciate it really because uh book reviews are difficult Never knew, but now I know. <clears throat> anyway, thank you for staying until the end. Sincerely, thank you. And uh, have a wonderful day ahead. Um, cheers, fellas.